What's going on to all my movie fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again with a brand new Netflix movie review and today we're breaking down the new drama by the name of Passing which I got the chance to check out the other night and I'm really excited to let you all know what I thought about it and let you know if it's worth checking out on Netflix when it becomes available this coming Wednesday all in this spoiler free review. Before we break it all down do me a favor and check me out on all my other social media accounts. If you all are new to the channel well welcome to the community consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell that way you can get the alert for when I drop new content. If you all enjoyed this spoiler free movie review, well, make sure to like and share the review. It helps out the channel a lot, but I also appreciate the support. And in those comments, let me know if you guys got the opportunity to see this earlier this year at Sundance. And if so, what were your thoughts about it? But if you got the chance to see it on Netflix recently, what did you all think about the film? Let's talk about the pros, the cons, performances, the directorial debut of Rebecca Hall. Let's talk about some of your criticisms and all your thoughts in the comments below. So let's start off with my positives. First and foremost, Rebecca. Rebecca Hall, I've mentioned it most recently when I reviewed her film that she was starring in, didn't direct it in, because again, this is her directorial debut. I mentioned in my review of Night House, I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's such an underrated actress, so I was really excited to see her direct the film, and I gotta say, I was pretty impressed. Now, there were moments that I'll talk about a little bit later that I think she missed some of the nuance and some of the themes she was trying to tackle, but for the most part, this black and white film addressing things like racism and identity and just kind of the conversation she brings to the table, I thought that she had this kind of really kind of vulnerable, uh, really kind of lets you into this narrative, the way she shot the film. It is in black and white, which I thought helped out to kind of put you in that time of the 20s. So for the most part, again, I thought Rebecca Hall, obviously a talented actress, but she definitely has a career in directing more films, whether it be more dramas or more diving into character pieces. I thought she did a really good job, but I do think her biggest accomplishment was directing two of one of my two of my favorite actresses working today one being Tessa Thompson who let's focus on her for a minute who plays Irene who's our main character in the film and if you guys do not know I guess I should have said this a little bit earlier in regards to, to the synopsis again I'm gonna leave it in the description you might have seen the trailer you might not have seen the trailer but essentially it's a film that takes place in the in the 20s we have this young lady by the name Irene played by Tessa Thompson she stumbles across one of her childhood friends played by Ruth Nega by the name of Claire and they're both kind of fairly light-skinned African-American women during this time, but they can pass for white women, hence the title of the name being Passing, which has a little bit more meaning to it once you see the film. But going back to my breakdown of Irene, uh, I, I thought Tessa Thompson, as she always does, did a really good job in the role. She plays a very believable character. There's a lot of nuance in her performance. There's this kind of conflict in herself. Again, the meaning behind this title can mean so much. Not only does it mean, yes, she can pass as a white woman. Does she take advantage of it hell yeah because during this time you know obviously with racism being at a, a you know a, a woman let alone a black woman going into an all-white store cannot be a good thing for her so yes she does have to sometimes use that her light skin in this story's advantage and how that kind of affects her her day-to-day -day life when she comes home to her black husband played by Andre Holland she has two black kids so there's a lot of conflict with her at the same time when she comes across her friend Claire who is a little bit more fair to skin and definitely has become a white woman in this point in her, her life which will We'll talk about her in a second there's a little bit of animosity a little bit of jealousy that she can kind of get away with this thing and we're seeing Irene tackling racism and kind of hiding racism so I thought that Tessa Thompson like I said as she always does brings this vulnerability brings this believability brings this kind of caring for the character and I really thought she did a great job and there were some criticisms that I have with the character which we'll leave for a little bit later but for the most part as I come to expect, Tyson Thompson never disappoints. But I gotta say, the person that really kind of stole the film for me was her co-lead and Ruth Nega, who I've always been a fan of. I think she's fantastic, but she plays Claire. Again, the person that has, at this point, talk about identity crisis, She's a full-on white woman. She's married a white man, played by Alexander Skarsgård. She has kids. She has this kind of luxurious lifestyle, and she has yet to really tell her husband who she really is and where she, where she comes from. So obviously, seeing her character tiptoeing around the big obvious thing that she kind of has, you know, this black heritage, and knowing that her husband, which if you guys see the film, Alexander Skarsgård, in the twenties, he's a white man. He's a business owner. He doesn't like black people. So there's obviously some conflict there. But just seeing, you know. Claire hanging around black people, letting her hair down, kind of, you know, at this, you know, and, and, and all the stuff that she's trying to enjoy this kind of two lives 
fantastic she's living in the film. I thought that Ruth really brought a, a good sense of the character to the role. And again, I was just very impressed by her. And I thought that she really kind of stole the film for me personally. Again, I mentioned Andre Holland's in the film who doesn't have a huge role. He's the husband in the film, but he has some integral parts of the movie. I thought he's great as he always is. Alexander Skarsgård has a really small role in this film, but I thought that he was fantastic as well. But I thought across the board, all the cast members brought their A-game. But again, it was Ruth Nega who stole the film and Tessa Thompson brings a really good sensibility to her role. And I thought the direction was solid. And just kind of touching on the themes without giving too much away, because there, there are moments I want you all to discover this film like I did. Again, this whole passing narrative as the obvious meaning being that a fairly skinned, light-skinned black woman can get away to being a white woman. There's obviously that narrative that the film tackles, which I thought handled it okay and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a second but I thought the biggest thing that took away from the film was the passing of who you are as a person we see the Irene character passing as a good wife passing as a happy wife passing as a, a, a black woman with a pretty good situation her husband's a doctor her sons are in good health she you know is doing good and and, and kind of has a good thing going on in her life but she's passing to be happy but there's more conflict within herself again hiding racism for her from her sons pretending to be black or and, and you know not pretending to be black but pretending to be white at points so there are moments that she's just passing through life pretending that everything's okay same could be said about claire she's happy with her husband but she doesn't like the fact she has to keep her identity uh you know kept safe so i like how the film tackles identity and insecurities that our chat that our, our, our characters have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis which brings me to my criticisms i thought that rebecca hall did a great job at identifying and kind of really tackling identity crisis but when it comes to the racism i don't think that all the nuance was there and kind of the narrative that she was trying to tell i thought Thought it was very surface level in a sense of how they tackled the racism and and how again we're in the 20s and what that could have meant there are several conversations in the film that racism is brought up but i think the film just kind of glances over it again they spend a lot of good time on focusing on the identity crisis but not so much on the racism that our characters are going through so i did feel like that was a little bit kind of lost in translation with rebecca hall's direction as well as the writing in the film which also brings me to the tessa thompson character there are moments that, again, I, I just wish they would have dove just a little bit deeper. It wasn't the performance, but it was just the, the characteristics. I wish we could have dove a little bit deeper in her character, the relationship with her husband, this kind of unspoken love triangle that the film kind of presents that it really doesn't dive into. So at the end of the day, I think my biggest criticism lies within the surface level of the racism, as well as there's a, there's a couple more themes that the film tries to present, but none of them just like fully felt fleshed out to me. So there are things that are like, that's interesting, that's interesting, but we don't really focus on too many of them to really give me a, a, a one of them that could say that was a fantastic job of what they handled there. So a lot of good things, but just I, overall, I don't think that they tackled every single subject matter with the full development they, that I think that they could have. So with all that being said, before I give you all my overall thoughts and give you my score, make sure if you haven't already to like the video, share the video, leave your thoughts in the comments. With that being said, overall, two great performances by our two leads, Tessa Thompson and Ruth Nega, a pretty impressive directorial debut by Rebecca Hall and the supporting cast brings their A-game. But unfortunately, there are some nuances I felt were missing in one of the big narratives and the racism of the story. I felt like there were moments that the film just presented a little bit too many things that they just didn't really fully flesh them out as I thought they did. And also, the third act kind of ended abruptly, which again, this isn't a film I was expecting this grandioso type of finale, but I thought the finale left a little bit more to desire. But at the end of the day, there are way more positives than negatives, so I'm going to give Passing a 3.5 out of 5. I recommend you all give it a shot. Again, really two great performances, really good direction, some really good type of subject matters and themes that the film tries to tackle, and I recommend you all give it a shot. And when you do, let me know your thoughts, your pros, your cons, what you think of the direction, the themes that the film presented, some of the things that stood out to you all were some moments you can relate to in the story let's talk about your negatives as well let's talk about it all in the comments below if you stuck around to this point in the review i appreciate every single one of you all before you leave make sure if you haven't already to like the video share the video subscribe to the channel and hit that bell that way you don't miss any of my future reviews hope you all enjoyed this review hope you're staying safe and as you can see on the screen now subscribe to my channel check out my other content and we'll catch you in the next video